Hello everybody, this is Steve Olson with WSO. Sometimes when I make a video, like the one I'm going to make today, um, it's hard to find a place to start. That is how amazing the discoveries that we've been making recently within the WSO community has been for me. The picture that I'm showing you right now comes from Kenny G in, in Milwaukee. He's one of our best photographers, one of our best uh, space photographers. And as you can see, guys, what you see here on the left is the sun, or what we call the sun. And to the right is a large object. This is the reversed or inverted view over to the right here. And what's remarkable about this is you can also see what appears to be electronic, elect electromagnetic lines of force coming out on this particular image as well, which is in itself very interesting. But what this reminds me of, guys, is the work of Velikovsky. And I'm going to show you a little clip um, here in a minute from a documentary that Michael Tessarian has put up on his channel on the Unslaved podcast that I'd like you to go watch, and I'll have it referenced here for you to look at. But in the Vel, if you haven't heard of Velikovsky, he was a Russian doctor first, and then ultimately multidisciplinary scientist who worked with people like Einstein and, and others during his time, to talk about the fact that we don't live in a stable universe or a stable solar system, but we live in a solar system that is, that is rife with cataclysm, rife with um, passing objects. And what's most notable about Velikovsky's model is that it goes back, and we'll, we'll do a whole story, we'll do a whole video on Velikovsky later. Go, I want you to watch Tessarian's video first, and then just kind of we'll have, be ready for that discussion. But the point being is that... Inter that planets like Ju like uh, Venus, for example, he says was a comet, an interloper that came into our solar system recently, that the sun itself might be an interloper, that we have experienced through ancient times, you know, a different solar system, a different sky, an alien sky. This is also talked about by the Thunderbolts Project and many, many others, okay? WSO has always come at this from a kind of a biblical theological point of view, an historical point of view as being Planet X or Nibiru. Now, we're also, the next picture I'm going to show you, though, guys, is, is quite remarkable, and so please brace yourself, um, and this could be disturbing to some viewers, so hang on to your hats. I'll let you turn off the video right now if, if you can't handle it, but if you can, here's the picture. Yeah, this picture right here from the United States from a subscriber who wishes to remain anonymous clearly shows what I would say to be a huge gaseous, who knows, what, who knows what that is, a huge orb behind what we are calling an artificial sun. I know this is very, very controversial, but again, I'm going to show you a clip. We're not the first ones to have these ideas. Velikovsky also said that we've been moved around in our orbit, and our th working theory right now is that we're actually looking at possibly Jupiter. So how would we get out into a mis misanthropic, I don't know how to say this. That's not the right word. Um, how would we get into this this misalignment, or 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 how would we get out into the solar system like that? So to say that we're near Jupiter or that we've traveled out into the solar system is not as outlandish as it seems. Because if you look at Val Velkovsky's model, he would actually claim that there was a time when Saturn was our main object in our sky, along with uh, Venus and Mars being very prominent in our skies. So it's not like there isn't plenty of evidence and plenty of huge scientific research that has gone into the Velikovsky model to say that we've moved around in our orbit, we've been pulled around, we've been dinked around. And so one of the things that happens, though, when we, when we suggest that we may be out towards Jupiter or that Jupiter may have moved in its orbit um, is the fact that um, a lot of people think that that's me saying that I'm, I'm, I'm somehow disputing my own theories about Wormwood, Planet X, those kinds of things. And that's not true at all. Because just like geoengineering, just like chemical spraying of the sky, um, it's great when I listen to Dane Winnington talk about its dangers and so forth, or I talk to somebody who's, who's into the Planet X theory or whatever, without considering why they are doing the geoengineering. Well, it would seem to me that the geoengineering has to do with us moving away from the sun and them creating a, ga a greenhouse gas effect, not trying to do solar radiation management as we start to look at these types of things. If we have moved out of our orbit, that is. The second thing you have to consider in the Planet X community, 
you know, Nibiru community, is you have to consider the fact that there would have to have been a cause for this change in orbit. That, I believe, still to this day, would be Nemesis, or the Wormwood system, the one that's talked about in the Bible and Scripture and so forth, you know, as many Christians here would attest. But this is a disturbing photograph. I will not, I will not lie and say that that is not something that I have, I have a lot of comfort looking at. But at the same time, understanding that the, the consequences of us moving into the orbit of one of the large, um, they called gas giants, I would call Jupiter now more akin to a, a brown dwarf star, is it's not as, it's not as sig significant and catastrophic as you'd think. The, the main effect would be the loss of temperature of about 10 degrees Fahrenheit off the surface temperatures, but the core of the Earth would start to heat up even more. Well, I'm getting reports now as we started to delve into this theory that there are farmers that can't dig down too far into the dirt because the dirt gets too hot. And this would explain the volcanism. This would explain, you know, all of the earthquakes and things that we've been looking at is if we are indeed in some type of a electromagnetic dance with a closer Jupiter or Jupiter that's closer to us, the, all the effects in the Occam's razor analysis that we talked about for Planet X would still be legitimate. So I just wanted to point this out to you. And then this is not the only photograph that we saw like this, guys. I will show you another one to refresh your memory. This is the, um, the this one on the left is a photograph that we received not too long ago. And it's remarkable how similar if you can imagine that you're looking at Jupiter through through the atmosphere that it's all messed up, that the bottom of Jupiter looks exactly like recent photographs. But look, this is the second time that we've seen this large orb behind the sun. And now what I want to do is I'm wondering, are we orbiting around at a very high rate of speed? And the reason that we see these huge halos in the sky is indeed because we are on the dark side of a large planet. Now, am I saying that this is definitely Jupiter? No. But I am saying that there's compelling evidence to suggest that we are looking at something in our solar system. How did we get here? Probably because of Nemesis. So that's my working theory right now. So I thought that you guys would be interested to see those photographs and those pictures. Other pictures that kind of suggest something weird going on here, guys. Here's this, a striped planet or striped object up in this corner. And then total darkness over here. It's just crazy the kinds of photographs that we see all the time, that we're seeing all the time. Okay. Here's another one. Now, this one comes from Finland. Again, the, the, the photographs that we are getting at WSO right now are, are to the level of fantastic, to the level of freaky. <clears throat> but I want we're going to talk about a spiritual message here as we get towards the end that will hopefully give you some comfort as well. But what we're looking at here, guys, is clearly something going on, and, and it would appear to be the edge of a large body sitting right there. Again, this photograph comes from Finland. So all, literally all over the world we're seeing this type of thing. Let's take another look at another one. This is a full spectrum image. Um, we've been getting some full spectrum photography from one of our subscribers. And if you want me to shout you out, bro, I will do it. Um, but right now I'll just keep it under wraps because I don't have your explicit pers permission. But full spectrum photography basically takes all the spectrums of light, electromagnetic, UV, IR, and combines it into one photograph. And what you can see here, again, is this huge orb object that just stands right out just to the left of the sun. Another interesting observation. And then of course, you know, we talk about the chemtrails all the time. I won't bore you with that. But I, again, I am starting to think when you look at something like this kind of a massive global effort um, and coordination that would have to happen on a worldwide basis, it only leaves you with one conclusion, that there's something that they're all that they're all trying to prevent, desperately trying to control, desperately trying to mitigate, and I think there's plenty of evidence for that. And again, we've got the huge halo and the you know the the chemtrails that we talk about all the time. Check out this photograph from one of the Earth cams. I think this is in Florida. It looks like Deerfield Beach to me, but yeah, right. More photographs from subscribers just showing the same thing. Have we changed in our orbit? Are we now experiencing electromagnetic effects of, of, of not only the sun, but also of other bodies? And if other bodies, what are they? Are they Jupiter? Are they planets in our solar system? Are we still being influenced by something else? I think that all of the above is true. I don't think that we've ruled out anything that we've talked about in this community uh, by any of the artists or creators all we're doing now is starting to get some focus on possibly what maybe maybe is going on. But you can see 
guys, when you see something like this, and I know a lot of you guys don't believe in the satellite stuff from NASA. I, I, you know, I respect your feelings on that. I know why you'd feel that way. But when you start to see these types of signatures, this is all electromagnetic energy, guys. And it would suggest that we're in a very crowded area of space. That's what this is saying to me. And then I wanted to look at um, one of the things I started doing then is also with the Kenny G photograph photography. Here you can see the Jupiter type object here again with the stripes. Again, could that be a different brown dwarf than Jupiter? Possibly. But also what we have here is a very clear image of a of an of a rock. Uh, or uh, I'm sorry, of a planet or orb or moon or whatever it is, okay? But then you look over here, and now what I did was I took all the main moons of Jupiter and I put them side by side to see if I could identify which one it looks most like, and it looks most like Io. There's been movies on Io lately. There's been all kinds of talk about Io, Saturn or Jupiter rising, Jupiter ascending. The moons of Jupiter are many. So if we were traveling and if we were in that part of space or if we were in some kind of proximity to Jupiter, we would expect to see these planets. We would expect to see these moons. And I see, I think these look a lot, they look, all look pretty familiar, don't they? We've seen this, this picture of this Mimas type object with a big hole in the side of it. We've seen pictures that look like Europa. We've seen pictures that look like these different. So again, I'm not saying that it's absolutely positively true that what we're looking at is is a closer look to Saturn. But did anybody catch the MBB333? And I won't show it right now. Just go to his channel. There's a little segment where he actually was able to take a picture with Jupiter with his camera and, and capture the capture the stripes of it, which is unbelievable because it used to take telescopes to do that. Again, much corroborating evidence to this. And here's the second one. Again, I'm just showing Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede to show. And then going over here to look at Kenny's photograph, again, we have this very round object right there not a lens effect not a lens effect my friends okay it's just not so what good is knowing all of this information you know what i mean what good would it do here's one where you can actually see stripes emanating out looks like an edge of something and then in this one you actually have some artificial stuff going on up in there but what good does it do to know all of this well here's what here there is some good to know from this first of all it answers a lot of questions if this is true Number two, we in this community have the privilege, the privilege, if, we, if we're really paying attention to this stuff and we really understand that there is the potential of cataclysm, there's the potential of, of disaster, et cetera, right around the corner, it gives us a chance to confront the angel of death before we have to face it face to face. And one of the great benefits of looking at this type of a, you know, kind of a potentially um, an event that will really change the face of the planet and, ch and change civilization itself is that you will be prepared and ready in your mind, in your heart to deal with this. And number two, it also gets rid of what we call the parasite. So when you start to look at this, it just obviates reality as you know it. It, it shatters the dream. It shatters the illusion. And it, there's a great benefit in that, guys. And what is that benefit? The benefit is, is that you can get rid of that consciousness that's not yours. You can decide for yourself what's important. You can stand on your own two feet in freedom and sovereignty because you're not worried about your life anymore. You face the angel of death. You faced your own demise. And now you can look, your, look it straight in the eye and say, look, the parasites that are on me are going to go. And I'm going to think for myself and I'm going to experience for myself, and I'm not going to be under the control of anybody else's consciousness. That's the benefit of all this stuff. Let's go to a couple stories, and there's much, much more to come. I don't even, like I said, I don't even know where to start half the time when I do a video nowadays, guys. So anyway, going back to the Velikovsky uh, idea, I'm going to recommend the Unslaved po podcast just published this. Synchronicity is strange with certain people right now. I have a strange synchronicity with a lot of you out there right now where we've kind of got onto this thing. But lest we feel alone, look what Emmanuel Velikovsky had to face in his time regarding the theories that he talked about. Not only was the scientific press carping at him, and in a way that was violent, 
not in terms of a violent does anybody does anybody can anybody relate just for talking about these ideas look at the violence that's been foisted upon our community an orderly discussion that this idea is yet to be tested and it takes more time and etc that's my position by the way is that we need to continue to study this and validate what we're saying in as opposed to just you know random but saying this idea is crazy and any man who has such an idea is mad insane that kind of thing but the establishment through which men who think that way make a living, the academic establishment, was saying to this man, you know, you're not safe. Now, and that's what they're saying to us. Just because we're thinking about and opening our minds up to the things like nemesis, like solar systems, like cosmic pinball, like the idea that the, our planet moves around, it's not in a stable, fixed orbit, blah, 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 blah. We experience the same violence. Velikovsky experienced the same violence. And am I comparing myself to Velikovsky? No. But what I'm saying is this community, you can see that there's been a vociferous reaction to what we say. We are the black sheep of the conspiratorium, make no mistake. But also, we're also sitting on the biggest granddaddy conspiracy in the history of mankind, if what we're saying is true. So a couple last things I wanted to talk about, and uh, we're going to talk about plasma later. But in case you're wondering about predictive programming, about this, I just got this article from BBC News from a subscriber talking about a famous, a very uh, popular movie in China, China's sci-fi industry called The Wandering Earth. It's basically a film that tells the story of our planet doomed by the expanding sun being moved across space to a safer place. The Chinese heroes have to save the mission and humanity when Earth gets caught in Jupiter's gravitational pull. And there's so much predictive programming once I started to look at this that it's not just the Americans, it's not just the British, it's not just the Austri you know, the, the Five Eyes. It's literally the whole world, science fiction, has talked about this and so forth. And let me not let let me let me remind you of one last thing. It's the Adam and Eve story. And this goes right up the, the center of the fairway as it relates to the Velikovsky model, and I'll leave a link of it below. But it talks about these ongoing and repeating cataclysms. And by the way, the CIA felt it was so important uh, that this story, this, this work of nonfiction was so important that they made it classified until 2016, well, 2014, and then finally released it in 2016. But they only released 50-some pages of the total co content of the book which I think was something like 300. So take a look at all this stuff. Now, why is, am I trying to scare the bejeebers out of you? No, what I'm trying to get you to do is to see that we live in a, in a volatile solar system. And again, I go back to this idea. If you can manage, and this is where I'll end up guys, okay? If you can manage to take an eternal perspective as opposed to a temporal one, do you even think about what eternal life is? Do you even think about what eternity might look like? When you look at the eternal perspective, these temporal things become an, an object of interesting scientific inquiry, and you also then have a chance to deal with your inner self. Because no matter how many rabbit holes that we jump down, and we'll talk about this more in the coming days and weeks, the rabbit holes aren't important. The who's, what's, and where's are not important. What's important is that all of this gets you to a state where you work on your inner self, where you are working on your self-accountability. You're becoming more virtuous. You're seeking to attain a higher level of vibration, as some would say, or spiritual path or spiritual truth. And if you are on that journey with me, my friends, welcome aboard. If you're thinking about joining this journey so that you can also know what's going on, hopefully we're learning what's going on, and that you can start to deal with your eternal spiritual heart, all of the things that come with that, then welcome aboard, WSO. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Be encouraged. Know that you're an eternal being. Know that you have nothing to fear. Steve Olson, WSO.